So recently I got this book called Irreverence for Wood by Eric Sloan. I was reading inside and he spoke about how old times people would make their own fence posts or posts uh, for fencing and um, the way that they would do it, of course uh, back then in the 1800s they didn't have treated wood like they have now. What they would do is they would take a tree and they would fall the tree and then turn the tree upside down and then they would uh, burn the top or charcoal, just heat treat the top out of a fire and then plant the tree upside down and this would actually cause the tree to be um, kind of uh, resistant to to de you know to for to decaying uh, so I'm gonna give that a try so I'm starting to put in a small orchard um, cleaning up the debris there's a trash trailer just cleaning up around here but uh, this area I'm fencing off with uh, trees that I had f fallen and I'm gonna square it in that way to keep the deer out of it and we're gonna plant some fruit trees in this area so once you've fallen and bucked up your uh, tree, cut it into a length, you can uh, take this tree and then the next step is to skin it up, take the bark off. So um, here's the reason why you want to uh, skin up your trees, is the bark here has a cambium layer that the bugs love. Now this is a tree I had skinned up. But I had this one little spot where I didn't get the bark off, and notice what happened. Right under the bark is where all the carpenter ants and all the insects decided to move in. Because, uh, be downright honest, that can be and later tastes good. So, as you see here, I've um, started debarking the tree. This is the length here. I've taken the draw knife and skinned the tree, taken the bark off. It's pretty simple because it's in the spring right now. Um, so in the springtime, in my experience, um, the bark comes off a little bit easier than in other times. Um, these trees had, we had a wildland fire that come through here, so that's why some of the, you see the bark is dark because it scarred up some of the trees with the brush fire that, um, that came through. So um, I've skinned, skinned this tree up. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to try this out and I'm going to kind of try something. I'm going to try to put some uh, ker kerosene or maybe some uh, lamp oil on the end of this tree and see if I can uh, kind of burn it a little, scorch it a little bit on the end that way. I don't know what's going to happen, if it will really work, but why not try it, right? Anyways, uh, let me get the oil. Okay guys, I got the lamp oil. Now, I forgot the tripod to the camera inside my car and my wife went shopping. So I'm going to do my best just to kind of hold it. I know it's not the quality that everyone is used to in my YouTube, but this is just how we're gonna have to roll, man. So I'm gonna saturate it, and uh, this is just lamp oil, so it should burn similar to like diesel fuel. It's not gonna explode. It's just gonna, it's just gonna burn. And my trusty old fire starter. Well, it's not exactly burning like I thought it would. It is burning though. I might just use end up using the torch just to scorch it this way. And uh, we're just scorching the part that is gonna go into the ground, which is about three and a half, excuse me, two and a half to three feet as I'm putting into the ground. So Looks like maybe the uh, oil was kind of a useless idea. <laughs> Should have just took it with a torch, man. <laughs> but that's cool. That's how you learn, right? So I'm gonna put more, um, I'm just gonna torch it for a while and uh, bring you guys back when I'm done. So I scorched up the tree with the uh, torch. 
I don't even know why I tried the uh, lamp oil. It only made it even more hard to scorch after I wetted it. Live and learn. I don't even know why I thought it would work. But anyways, so I scorched up the tree with the, uh, the torch there and blackened it up pretty good. Kind of charcoaled the surface. Heat treated it. And uh, we're gonna... Now this is, remember, this is the top of the tree. The, the base of the tree when I fell it was up back here. So this is the top portion. And I'm guessing the logic of the old timers was that if you turned it upside down, it wouldn't have quite the draw strength of, of the, when it was sitting upright, you know, being in the ground upside down. It wouldn't draw, you know, moisture into the tree as heavily. I'm, I'm kind of guessing at that, but I, I imagine that was the kind of logic behind it. And then uh, chark you know, heat treating it, I imagine too, would kind of uh, cause it not to soak up the moisture quite as quickly as well. That's what I'm guessing. So uh, we're gonna stick it in the ground and, and uh, um, Okay. All right, you big green tree. They are a lot heavier when they're green. Uh, oh man. It's a whole lot heavier than it looks. Maybe I'll just drag it. <laughs> and then we'll do it. Okay. Lift with your legs. <clears throat> Flex your abs. Okay. Okay. We got it in. Kick some dirt in that hole. Help it to stay put. Okay. Now I gotta stand back there and make sure that they're lining up right. over there. Well, it looks like it's leaning, has to lean a little bit this way. And then I take the handle of this thing and cram down the dirt down the hole. Go this way a little bit.
I really don't know if that was the old timers had in mind as far as scorching with a torch. I'm seeing these little chips here and I'm sure the fire and the heat would have hardened the wood, got some of the moisture out, but I almost think maybe it would be better just to start a fire under the front top of it. It'd be a little difficult though, because these poles are somewhere between three to 400 pounds, I'm guessing. Um, and uh, I could imagine it'd be a little difficult to pack the uh, logs. I guess you could, but it would be kind of hard on your back. I didn't really want to push my back too hard. But using a little blowtorch kind of, maybe I should have burned it a little bit more, I don't know, but it's definitely a lot harder here. The material is much harder here than it is here where it got scorched, so. These other posts I didn't put it in this way. Um, I just thought of it, read that book and and uh, said, well, I should maybe should I do the rest of them that way now that I know about it. So, anyways, I've noticed I've put tree poles in like this before. These are pine. And I've noticed that they usually last a good five years before they start rotting pretty bad. I think you can get about five to 10 years out of them in the ground, even without them being fire treated like this. Um, but I'm kind of curious how long, much longer they will last with it being treated this way. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.